Hi guys, how's it going? It's me, Josh Halter, owner and founder of The Bio Dude. You can come visit my store here Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. and Saturday, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Come visit my website, thebiodude.com. Hit that like and subscribe button. And of course, follow me on social media. And today, I'm gonna talk to you guys about my favorite top five beginner reptiles. Five being, you know, a little bit more difficult on the beginner side and number one, being the best starter reptile, regardless of age or experience level. Now let's get started. All right guys, so the very first one on our list, and that's number five, we're gonna start with the ball python. These African pythons are one of the most, the most popular pet snakes bred here in the United States. The reason for that is this exactly. They are extremely calm, very calm. If they're stressed out, they curl into a ball, hence their name, ball pythons. They do have a history of a, of a species of just like stopping to eat for like no, the people would say for no reason, but we've come such a far away in understanding them as a species and providing them, you know, actu an actual nice uh, good level habitat and the entrance and the aspect of deep substrate, which I'll cover here in a minute, that they have found that these can not only are very active snakes, uh, but they are generally easy to take care of as long as you're meeting your husbandry parameters. So, so to, to, to get started, the, uh, this, this ball python right here is an absolute beauty um, of a male. Uh, and it's really nice about balls is they come in a lot of different colors. You can get ones with lots of different genes um, that they call them. So, you know, caramel ghosts and uh, pied ball pythons and a whole bunch of other ones. I'm not the guy you want to ask about different genes and if those genes are, you know, good or not. However, I do know just as a snake, they are great, great, great for kids and they do like to come out during the day from what I have seen. There's a lot of thought that they, that they do not bask. The ones here at the dude definitely bask. This guy right here, he is eating a, a, he's eating a, a, a large adult mouse every single week. Uh, when they do get larger, they do end up eating rats and we typically feed them every other week once they get too close to subadult size. We like to keep them on a deep layer of terra firma uh, as well as give them strong root, rooted plants with a really strongly aerated enclosure that allows for a good humidity retention and humidity spikes throughout the day, as well as providing those different thermal gradients that we like so much. With, as far as getting these guys set up, they do need a big enclosure. A minimum size of a four foot by two foot by two foot is acceptable for an adult. But quite frankly, if you give them more space, they will utilize every single inch of space. So essentially, ball pythons, while sometimes they can be finicky eater eaters, just make sure you do your due diligence with the thousands of breeders that there are here in the United States that uh, as far as what to expect with the specific genetic lineage that you're getting as well as what their eating schedule is. Are we eating frozen thawed? Are we eating live? And so on and so forth. But their calm demeanor, their, their, the ability to get them set up easily makes them great candidate for candidates for children as well as experienced and entry-level hobbyists alike. And that is why I absolutely love ball pythons. And that is why they are number, they are number five on our top five best beginner reptiles. All right, guys, so a very strong number four. And hands down, probably one of my most favorite geckos that I have gotten to keep in my life. And those are leopard geckos. These inquisitive, intelligent little lizards are from Afghanistan. Now, what makes them unique is they are eyelidded geckos. So there are some geckos that are unable to blink, so to speak. Leopard geckos are not in that group. They can blink their eyes. They also do not have the lamella on their feet, i.e. the sticky feet like crested geckos have. So instead, these guys have claws. So one of the things that makes them slightly more Challenging isn't the right word, but something you need to pay attention to is you need to make sure that when they shed, you're not having issues with shed getting stuck at their phalanges because they can cut blood flow and then they can just fall off. Kind Guys, of. I, I love leopard geckos. They are amazing pets. 
Number one, they stay relatively small. On average, they get about eight inches long. Uh, you can keep females together, can't keep males together. You can keep a pair together, but you really need to watch to make sure the male isn't constantly hounding the female. Like other geckos, they do have regenerative abilities. Uh, so they can drop their tail. As you can see, their tail is segmented here. They drop their tail, and when they do, all the neurons in the tail pretty much fire off, which causes an intense vibration, uh, uh, you know, static emotion uh, that typically uh, distracts the aggressor long enough for the leopard gecko to get away. This is one of their natural niches that they've developed to survive the harsh environment that is Afghanistan. Now, leopard geckos go through a big color change when they get older. So what usually, depending on the type that you have, like you can get them in many colors, guys, and they have multiple different names. You can get white ones called blizzards. You can get albinos. You can get carrot tails. Like there's so many different types, which makes them readily available for captive bred, which is cool. But this is just, you know, one, uh, one, one, of, the, one of the more high yellow types here. As you can see, when he was younger, the top of his head was black and it was solid black and then you can see he has his stripes right here as they get older those stripes end up going down um, and going and turning into speckles hence the name leopard gecko these guys are crepuscular which means they are mainly going to be active at dusk and dawn and at night um, Typically, early hours of the night is when they're going to be coming out. So when you're planning this gecko for your for your small, you know, small son or daughter or whatever, you just need to make sure that you're familiar with their schedule. So ensuring that you're keeping them in an enriching bioactive habitat is extremely important. Allowing them to dig and have humidity hides as well as providing UVB. We do recommend a lower Ferguson zone for them being crepuscular, such as the Arcadia Shade Dweller, which is an amazing product. We do provide a hot spot as well. So heat, UVB, minimum size for an adult leopard gecko, in my opinion, is a 40 breeder, which is a floor print of 36 inches by 18 inches. But I do see people keeping adults in a 20 long. But again, guys, if you, if you um, give them more space, they will utilize every single inch of the space. And getting them set up when compared to a bearded dragon is slightly more inexpensive, just in the aspect of it's a smaller cage, you know, maintaining the arid bioactive habitat, whether you're using my Terra Sahara or whatever, um, and as well making sure that all of your husbandry parameters are correct. And they are carnivores, which means they are eating uh, crickets, uh, small dubia nymphs, Wax worms, silk worms, whatever he can get his little mouth on, that is what he likes. And that is why leopard geckos, guys, are a strong number four for the best beginner pet reptile. All right, guys, number three. Now, you guys know I love North American colubrids, and corn snakes are definitely no exception. These beginner snakes, not only are they vibrantly colored, but they are one of the most, of all the reptiles I've kept in my life, they are hands down, as far as snakes are concerned, one of the most docile that I've ever, that I usually keep. They are the most forgiving when it comes to entry level hobbyist mistakes, when, you know, and as well as, you know, eating. Sometimes you have snakes that will only take live or snakes that'll only take, you know, chicks or whatever. I've never had a corn snake give me issues with eating frozen fog. Now, corn snakes, being from North America, you have to replicate their habitat as such. Being a being a, a, a smaller, you know, typically on the smaller side for a snake, these guys love deep substrate. So I usually pro provide them about four inches of substrate. And you can see we do have a, a, a very young, um, uh, we're unsure of the sex here. This is one of the ones in quarantine gonna be coming out for sale at the Biodute Houston soon. Corn snakes stay relatively small. Very rarely do they exceed five feet, although I have seen um, some monstrous uh, females every once in a while, but usually it's right around three, three, three and a half feet long um, on average, depending on what type of specimen you have. They do come in all sorts of shapes and colors. This is, uh, this is an albino corn snake that you can see right here. Uh, and then we do also have, you know, other types. There's Okatees and there's white ones and there's yellow ones. And they just come in like some of your other critters in so many shapes and s shapes. 
uh, and colors. And what makes it so amazing with these guys is since they are bred here in the United States, it is very easy to find a captive bred specimen um, that is already established in eating, uh, you know, uh, frozen thawed. This little guy right here is eating frozen thawed, uh, very small fuzzies to bigger pinkies. And we eat once a week. Uh, we, we do provide them with UVB. We do provide them with a Ferguson zone right around one, one to one and a half. So that is right around a Reptisun 5.0 or an Arcadia 6. And they, and they do bask during the day. Being diurnal, these guys are out during the day. They love to climb. So lots of places to climb in their enclosure with plants with strong root systems. They absolutely love rocks. Let me tell you, I have a large basking rock in Fierce and Nagini's cage, and they swap out basking spots on that rock almost daily. And then I'm sure you guys re remember Fierce. So this is a good example of an adult corn snake. Fierce is roughly a little over, uh, a little over four feet long. Uh, and as you guys know, Fierce is uh, Nagini. The other corn snake I have is pretty small. Uh, Nagini, uh, excuse me, Fierce is about seven years old, as you can see here. You notice how he has a very similar demeanor as the other corn snake. He's just bigger. So it feels like he's moving a lot faster just because of his girth. He is taking uh, a larger small rat uh, every other week. Uh, and if we have ever have small medium rats, we, uh, he, he gets one of those just as long as he has that nice bump. Other than that, corn snakes, as you can see, really easy, really easy to really easy to handle, excuse me. And obviously they're great for kids. I've had fears strike at me a couple times, hence how he has his, has his name fears, but Nagini has never struck or done anything and neither has this little guy over here. And again, corn snakes are just amazing colubrids I, and found in North America, which makes it an even more fun of a snake to keep because depending on where you live, not only can you find them out in the wild, but it's something else that you can re relate with your smaller children if you are trying to get them in the snakes. And again, for me, that is why corn snakes are very, very strong. Number three. All right, number two. And another one of my favorites is the Cresta Gecko. These guys are hands down one of the most bred geckos probably in the United States. And, and for good reason, guys. They come from the island of New Caledonia. And what's really interesting about these guys being crepuscular, like just like leopard geckos, being out dusk, dawn, and entry level night, is that they are uh, nectar eaters in, in, in a sense. So these are one of the few geckos that their primary source of diet can be a, a commercially purchased food, uh, such as one made by Ripashi or Pangea, both of which we offer on our website. We do also like to offer them, you know, protein as well. So crickets, soft-bodied roaches occasionally in conjunction with the powder diets, which makes these guys one of the most easiest geckos to take care of. We do like to provide them UVB. We normally give them around a Reptisun 5.0 um, or an Arcadia 6. We do like to keep a minimum, a single adult and a 18, 18, 24 for one. However, there are people that, you know, do have success keeping them in much larger enclosures. I've seen, uh, so some people keep two of them in a uh, 36, 18, 36. You do end up having to separate out the male from the female eventually because they'll just hound them. But uh, they are just amazing, amazing reptiles. So, so a little bit different from leopard geckos. These guys do have the sticky feet, as you can clearly see. Um, which makes them ability to jump. They, unlike leopard geckos being terrestrial, these guys spend a lot of their time on the under canopy. Sometimes you can find them in, uh, towards the bottom end in the leaf litter curled up within the leaves, especially when they're smaller, sleeping, or tucked in into some larger plants that, uh, that give them cover from the sun as well as give them opportunity zones to stay hydrated given the, during the hot day. The, the end of their tail, they do also have some of the lamella on the back, which allows their tail to stick to the base as well. Like other geckos, these guys can drop their tails when stressed out. And then, you know, it shakes, goes crazy, and then uh, distracts the aggressor. But what's different than a lot of geckos is these guys don't regenerate their tail. 
um, which is really interesting. So they, they can drop their tail, but they cannot regenerate it. As far as, you know, as far as keeping them with kids, the biggest thing with these guys is their skin is very delicate, meaning if, if, you, if they rub up against uh, something really sharp in the enclosure, like a sharp piece of wood, with how their skin is, it can kind of uh, sometimes cause lesions and things like that. I've never seen it, but I've, I've actually I've heard of it happening. Uh, and then making sure that because they are on a powdered diet that you are giving them uh, their calcium without D3 since you are providing UVB and a multivitamin to make sure that they have a balanced diet and making sure that you set your schedule with the understanding that, you know, that they are going to be out when the sun's going up or sorry, when the sun's going down uh, and at nighttime. And they are relatively inexpensive to get set up too, which is really nice. You can, you know, get get a Cresty set up this size for, you know, with, with Biodude Terrafauna or whatever you want to use with the enclosure, fly right around 300 bucks, depending on, you know, how, you know, crazy that, that, that you want to get. But these guys love broadleaf plants. They love bromeliads. They love to come out and drink the dew in the morning. And hands down, they are an amazing pet for kids because there is, I have never seen an aggressive crested gecko in my life. Maybe that first will come one day. And that is why crested geckos are hands down number two. Okay guys, so number one and number one for really good reason, and that is the bearded dragon. Now, these Australian lizards make amazing pets for multiple reasons. Hercules is not the happiest right now because I pulled him out of his really warm enclosure, but bearded dragons make such good pets. They are intelligent, they are able to withstand entry level beginner mistakes, the biggest thing with bearded dragons is that they get rather, you know, they get a, a little bit bigger, which means you need a bigger cage. So the minimum uh, size for an adult is a four foot by two foot by two foot enclosure. Uh, at home, we keep Hercules right here in a 60 by 36 by 36, which you guys have seen, uh, seen some of his enclosures th th throughout his life. We do have a, a, a little baby here next to him so that way you guys can see. One great thing about bearded dragons is they come in all shapes and colors. When I say uh, shapes, you have ones that get really big, German giants, and then you have smaller ones that you know get about the size of Hercules. You can get white ones, you can get uh, orange ones, red ones, yellow ones. They come in so many shapes and colors and they are beautiful. Being agamids, they are pretty intelligent. They do respond to operant conditioning when given the right type of stimuli and rewards. Uh, as far as their setup is concerned, they can be costly to set up, and that's like most reptiles. So proper UVB, proper heat hooked up to a thermostat if required, proper supplements, as well as a full bioactive enclosure. Being omnivores, bearded dragons are really good in the aspect that you can plant healthy edibles in their enclosure, which gives them, you know, something to do, allows them to forage, and allows them to act as if they would in the wild, as well as, you know, enjoying, enjoying their time basking. They're great for kids. You can hold them, and very rarely, very, very rarely will you find a aggressive towards people bearded dragon uh, and you know and this and this is a really good lizard as well because they do have a relatively longer lifespan hercules right now i believe he's about seven and a half years old he might be a little bit older and this little baby right here isn't isn't any older than three months of age so bearded dragons are number one guys because a they're extremely personable two you can get them set up. You can feed them things like lettuce, rosemary, basil, oregano, spineless cactus pads, allow them to forage in the enclosure as well as a balanced diet of insects. And at the end of the day, you have a really docile pet lizard that you can uh, bond with and enjoy. And that is why bearded dragons are a very strong number one for the best beginner reptile. All right, guys, I really hope you enjoyed my top five beginner reptiles. Feel free to like and subscribe my channel. Check me out on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. I really appreciate everybody's support. The dude abides.